Fallen soldiers in wars are oftentimes sent back to their home countries for funeral and burial. However, that is not always the case. The United States has the American Battle Monuments Commission that operates dozens of overseas cemeteries and monuments dedicated to the American troops who fought and died on foreign shores. Today, we are going to talk briefly about one of those, the Normandy American Cemetery and Memorial. Now this cemetery originated after the D-Day landings in Normandy on June 6, 1944, where on the 8th, the US Army established a temporary cemetery for the casualties of the invasion and the days following. This was the first American cemetery on French soil during World War II, and it would not be the last. This original cemetery's location was to the west of what is now the Normandy American Cemetery and Memorial. The cemetery was officially dedicated in 1956 with representatives from both France and the United States being present. An interesting thing about that cemetery, and others like it, is that the French government granted the United States a concession to the land that the cemetery occupies, free of any taxes or charges. This gravesite, alongside many other sites and monuments, is operated by the American Battle Monuments Commission, an independent agency of the federal government. The cemetery houses close to 10,000 United States service members from a large variety of backgrounds. The majority of the graves are marked with a Latin cross for Protestants or Catholics, while there are also 151 Stars of David for those of a Jewish background. These religions were the only ones recognized by the United States Army at that time. There are also 45 pairs of brothers here, the majority of which lie side by side. Also interned are a father and son, an uncle and his nephew, two pairs of cousins, three generals, four chaplains, four civilians, four women, 147 African Americans, and 20 Native Americans. There are also 307 unidentified soldiers buried at this cemetery. It really does go to show the wide impact the war had and how many people from many backgrounds came together to fight the German war machine even in a time where discrimination in all of its forms ran rampant. Now the design of the cemetery actually has many interesting quirks that could be missed by visitors. To start off, the cemetery is divided into 10 plots, forming the shape of the Latin cross, with a chapel at the center and the memorial and wall of the missing at the base. A fun fact is that the entire cemetery is oriented so that all of the graves face towards the United States, towards home. So even though the fallen may be far from home, they always know where it is. It is a comforting yet tragic thought. Now the memorial and wall of the missing at the base are both very interesting sites. The memorial is a semicircular colonnade with a loggia, or exterior gallery essentially, at either end. The loggia both contain maps and narratives of military operations of the war. At the center of the semicircle, there is a large statue made by Donald Delu, named The Spirit of American Youth Rising from the Waves. It captures the spirit of the full force of the United States coming to bear in the effort to retake Europe. Over the arches of the memorial, there is an engraving that reads, This embattled shore, portal of freedom, is forever hallowed by the ideals, the valor, and the sacrifices of our fellow countrymen. Alongside that, at the feet of the memorial, is an engraving in both English and French. In proud remembrance of the achievements of her sons, and in humble tribute to their sacrifices, this memorial has been erected by the United States of America. Another key feature is the chapel that lies at the center of the cemetery. It is a multi-confessional chapel with stained glass that includes a Latin cross, Star of David, and Alpha and Omega symbols intended to represent all other religions. The ceiling is made up of a 500,000 tile mosaic, depicting a story meant to represent war and peace. The chapel as well has many engravings meant to both honor the sacrifices made and promote the peace the fallen fought for. A couple more interesting facts are that the trees in the cemetery are actually cut short from the top. It's an odd detail that many might miss upon viewing or misinterpret. This is actually intentional, however, and is meant to symbolize all the lives that were cut short. Another side detail are the walkways that are oddly colored red. It's a small detail, but is meant to symbolize the blood that was spilled. 
Truly, both of these in combination make entry to the cemetery even more impactful. There are a lot of interesting or famous internments in the cemetery as well. One of those would be Theodore Roosevelt Jr., the actual son of President Theodore Roosevelt. He was serving in the army during the battle and landed on Utah Beach with his soldiers. Theodore is actually also one of the only three Medal of Honor recipients interned here. Now if you remember from earlier the thousands of internments that I said are here, interestingly only one of those is from any other conflict than World War II. That is actually Quentin Roosevelt, another son of the late President Theodore Roosevelt, who was killed in action in World War I. He was actually exhumed from his original grave in order to be buried next to his brother in the Normandy Cemetery. Now if anyone remembers Saving Private Ryan, there are a couple interesting things related to that movie. First of all, at the beginning and end of the movie, the setting is actually at the Normandy Cemetery and was filmed there, one of the only times it has appeared in film. Alongside this, if you didn't know, the movie was not actually based on a true story, but inspired by real-life brothers that died during the war. Those would be the Nyland brothers, four brothers who all served during the war, two of which died while a third was presumed dead before later being discovered as a POW. The two brothers that died are buried here, side by side. Now I could rant on for hours and hours about interesting stories about those that lie in the cemetery, or the cemetery itself, but I'm going to cut it here. And if you want to hear more about it, or other parts of the history and the invasion of Normandy, leave a comment, and I would be happy to cover it. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video today. Uh, so I actually had the opportunity to visit the cemetery about a year and a half ago, um, and it was a really, really moving uh, experience for me. Um, and I really enjoyed it, and that's why I want to share some info on it today, as I feel like it's a topic that's not really talked about a whole lot. Um, anyway, if you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe, um, and leave a comment of some topics you might like me to cover. If you don't, I'll eat this puppy. Just kidding. Um, I wouldn't do that. She's a cutie. Um, and anyway, that's all for me, and I will see you on the flip side.